Hello, welcome to the Mentored Engineer. Today we're going to be looking at our log splitter again, and we're going to talk about the sizing of the cylinder, and what to do when you know the outside diameter of the cylinder, but you don't know the bore size. Alright, the next thing we're going to talk about is how to determine that angle uh, that uh, we'll be pressing against with the offset. Alright, so we need to know those things, and let's start figuring out. Alright, in here I have drawn this up in SOLIDWORKS. And I've made a couple of assumptions. Uh, the biggest one being that uh, the centroid of the beam is symmetrical top to bottom. So that we can just use the midpoint in gathering our data. The second one will be the smallest log size that I'm really willing to split. And I've determined that to be 16 inches. Below that, not really worth splitting. Um, but we'll see uh, if, if that is the case. Alright, so I've taken a couple screenshots and added them to our MathCAD here. Here's the one of the SOLIDWORKS. And then below it is the equations from our last video. Alright, the one that we're really concerned about here is our, our moment. So let's start there. It's the force of the cylinder times E. And we'll just lump that in. So force of the cylinder times the quantity of E minus B times... Uh, our downward force times the length. All right, and that length is now 16 inches. So let's go ahead and uh, just put the, the variables in here. And I won't drag it back up to the top, but it's 5.89 inches for E. B was equal to 2.39 inches. And L is equal to 16 inches. Okay. So we know our, our working pressure. Uh, well, let's let's go in and, and, and calculate our force of the cylinder, right? So let's just put in our basic equation. So the force of the cylinder is the uh, area uh, extending times our pressure. All right, and obviously it doesn't know either of those terms yet. Let's set set those up. All right, so what we do now is the OD of our cylinder is 4.75 inches. And that's not labeled anywhere. I just put that. And our rod is equal to 2 inches. Okay, so how do we find a bore? That's a good question. All right, so we know, uh, and I'm going to use a solid block here. It's got to be capital G. Or at least I like it to be. I'm not sure if it does or not. Um... Our stress is going to be, we're going to use the Boolean equal here because we're using a solid block. Uh, our pressure times our OD minus our thickness divided by the thickness. And this is just um, using the thin wall pressure vessel equation, also known as Barlow's equation. All right. And it's going to give us an error here if we say uh, T, and that's what we're trying to find, is find T. It's going to give us an error when we hover over it says this variable or function is not defined above. Okay. Well, we know our OD is defined. T isn't defined. So let's just say T is equal to a quarter inch. All right. And it's still giving us an error because we don't, we haven't specified our stress. All right. So now we need to ask something. Uh, it's kind of industry standard, but not very well known. What the heck is a stress? So, most cylinder manufacturers will use a 1026 material, uh, which is 70 KSI. They're just going to use it as their, their go-to, their standard. They can, it's readily available, the strongest. Um, and that has a yield strength between 70 and 75 KSI. We're going to use 70 here. Uh, and we're also, I'm going to call that the yield strength, not the, uh, the stress we can use. Uh, we're also going to use a design factor of 2. Alright, because well, we've got to have some sort of factor in there so this thing doesn't break. And then I'm going to have uh, the stress equal to the yield strength divided by the stress there. So that is equal, hopefully, to 35,000 psi, and that's close enough. It's got a rounding error. All right. So it's still saying that the variable is not defined, and we haven't defined our pressure. All right. And we know that our pressure 
is going to equal 3,000 psi because that's what I'm going to set the system relief pressure to. Hey, look at that. It worked. Okay, now let's find out what that equals. Alright, so our thickness there is, is 0.2 inches, and that was close to our, our guess. Alright, but is that believable? Uh, let's calculate our bore size from that. So that's going to be OD minus two thicknesses, because it's one on each side. And our bore then would equal 4.36. Now that is not a common size of the tube. So, uh, it's also not common to have a design factor of only two. You probably want a design factor of three. Alright, maybe even four. Alright. So, any one of those gives you, here, let's just stay with four. It gives me a bore of four. Now, cylinders, once, once you get above two to three inches, they only come in half inch sizes after that. And then after, after about six or seven inches, they only come in one inch sizes. All right, so finding um, like a four and a quarter bore is kind of hard to do. All right, so we're gonna assume that we're using three eighths inch wall tubing and we've got a four inch cylinder, okay? So just in case I, I, I change my design factor later, I'm gonna specify that the bore equals four inches, so that does not change. All right, and as a result, we're gonna calculate our area extending. That's gonna equal pi over four times four squared. All right, and that's why I love MathCAD so much. It just, it uh, allows you to do things to keep units in there, get some nice pretty equations. Alright, so there we have, look, no red down here, so let's find out what F cylinder uh, equals. I forgot to put the period in there. Alright, and look at it in pounds. Alright, so that's 38,000 pounds, which uh, is uh, 19 tons here. Let's uh, just put it in tons here to show you the easiness of the conversion. Yeah, 18.85 tons, that's awesome. So I think it'll the real hops. Okay, now let's uh, move on and check the uh, the angles and resulting moment. Okay, so let's put our governing equation down here. Our moment at A is equal to F to the cylinder times E minus B plus the force down Oops. times L. Okay? Now it's saying all of a sudden, hey, I don't know what FD is, right? Well, from our equation up here, FD is equal to the force of the cylinder times the tangent of the angle. Oops. Let's try that again. So I actually have a tangent function here. Tangent of theta. Alright, now I don't know what theta is, but I do know the tangent of any angle is the rise over the run. So why don't we just use that? Why don't we just say um, the rise, which we saw it works here, is the 11.5 inches over the run, which is 16, which we've already specified as L. Alright, so let's just say FD equals force them cylinder times H over L. Oops, what did I do there? Alright, and I didn't specify H yet, but that's going to equal 11.50 inches. So our force down is equal to, oops, not PSI, pounds force. All right, so that's actually quite a bit, bit of a force there. You can see that it's nearly uh, two-thirds of, 
the other force. And that gives us a moment of oops, I got a cap lock on there. Uh, almost 600,000 inch pounds, which is a pretty good size. We're going to need a pretty big beam to resist that. Well, that's as far as I wanted to get in this video. The next one will actually set up the section properties and we'll calculate uh, what the bending stress is there, as well as look at the shear and axial loads. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.